they be a physical unit or a service item, we're going to have a quantity field. So we might have, have had a design, two designs that were more made. It's not a physical unit, but we're still going to be call, calling them uh, a design item because we've put them into finite groups that we're charging by item, even though they're service items. So that's going to be basically uh, this first line uh, on the quantity of items that we have sold. So then we have uh, the amount here, and this is going to be the cost amount. And then we've got the percentage of uh, the sales. I'm sorry, this isn't the cost amount. This is the sales price amount. So this is what we're selling them for, not what we purchased them for. And if I get to the total down here, we get to the 10,280.05. That you would expect to match out to the income statement over here, where it doesn't quite 10,277. Why doesn't it match out? Because it's possible to record something to income without recording an item that you're selling. Uh, whereas that isn't the case, as we talked about last time, on the balance sheet accounts, which have a similar subledger of accounts receivable and accounts payable, having subledgers broken out by customer and by vendor. These ones have to tie out or almost always will because QuickBooks forces you to record a customer every time you post something to them. That's not the case with the income accounts. Therefore, it's possible for this one to be off. However, if you use the invoices and the sales receipts forms and you properly populate an item and you have your items set up properly, then it should tie out, right? And if it doesn't tie out, then you can fix what is going on. You can fix what is wrong and you can try to make it correct going forward because these are income statement accounts which will roll out to retained earnings. Therefore, in the next year, you'll start over again and you can try to you can try to make it work the the next year uh and and start kind of somewhat from a clean slate uh, at that time so there's the total now the, these are the quantity so if if these were service items here that we're selling then some of these if some of these were service items then you wouldn't have any quantity right because that would only be the inventory items the percentage of sales column let's pull out a trusty calculator Where's my calculator? It's not in my recently used area. How can that be? There's the calculator. So then we can say if I took the total, the 2670.25 divided by the total down here, divided by the 10280.05, that's going to give us, if I move the decimal two places over, the 25.98 about so that's what the percent is the percents are nice because if we're benchmarking to another business usually one that's larger than us i can't compare the total units that we sold or the total dollar amount that we sold by unit but i can compare and say how much quantity of each inventory item am i selling as compared to my total revenue does that match up who can i best benchmark to in terms of a, a business that's similar to ours that I can kind of give my percentage calculations that would be of, of similar nature. Uh, then this is gonna be the average price. So if we sell inventory items, then, uh, I'm sorry, this is gonna be the average price that we sell the things for. So we can actually calculate that here because it's an average price. So if this was the amount uh, that was sold here, 2250 divided by the 30, we get an average price of 75. So we sold them for about 75. 122.5 divided by 10 is about 1225. So that's about what we sold those items for. It's average because you might have changed the price over the year. So it might not have been, you might not have sold them for that amount for the entire year, but that's the average price given this time range. And then if there's a cost of goods sold, then this column will only be here if you sold actual inventory units. And so this is going to be the cost of the items uh, that were sold that will be tracked as you sell uh, the physical units of inventory. And then this is going to be the gross margin per item, which we can calculate by saying, okay, if the, if the sales price is 72.75 minus the, the 20, 
that's going to give us the 52.75 and then the gross profit percent would be the percent of the gross profit divided by the sales price in this case of the 72.75 and that gives us about 72.5 percent now notice i think i misspoke on the quantity over here because i was thinking quantity in terms of selling inventory uh, units but this is the quantity that we sold even including service items so if you're selling service items you'll still have the quantity here because you're selling that quantity of service items even though it's not a physical thing i was thinking physical thing in my mind the cost of goods sold over here will only be there for the inventory items uh, that we sell so that's the general idea so this is another area where it's a sales item so this would be a great uh, thing that we could use to create pie charts with and whatnot or bar charts or whatever we want to do which we might do in future presentations by exporting this to excel and then uh, making charts within excel from it if i go to the tab to the right we got the sales by products detail so now we've got the uh, design up top for example this is the item that we sold these are the transaction types either sales receipts or invoices that's all you would expect to be in here if you just used the sales forms to record the sales of your items the customer the memo these are uh, the quantity that was sold and that would be the quantity for both service items and inventories items the sales price and the amount and then the uh, balance so giving us basically a running balance so this will be the detail uh, report for it as well so that's going to be the sales by so just to recap the sales by product or the sales line of the income statement can generally be broken out by sales by customer and then sales by product sales by who you sold it to and sales by what you sold however you can only use those sub reports if you're recording your sales using the sales forms and inputting them properly with invoices and sales receipts if you're not doing that then that's okay because it might be easier to use a different system like using bank feeds deposits to record sales but then you have to recognize you don't have those sub reports and therefore you might record your income with more category groups that are based on customer or what you sold possibly whereas the general rules you don't want to do that you want to keep your income statement clean and tidy and neat and not too long and then have that added detail on the sub reports.